Hey, it's Cody again, and we're here for part three of three of our Lightboard series on Active Cluster and VMware. And so the last topic we want to discuss is, okay, so we have Active Cluster, we have a stretched ESX server cluster, but how does this work? How does VM failover work? What happens if I lose part of my environment? How does VM react? Do I need to manually involve myself in this process? Well, the answer is no. VMware has a feature called vSphere High Availability, vSphere HA. And what vSphere HA does is it monitors for certain failures. And if you lose a VM, if you lose a host, if you lose some storage, vSphere HA can respond to that and restart those virtual machines on a different host, a host that still has access to those resources. And so there are different types of failures that vSphere HA can monitor for. So one of them is host isolation. If my host has been isolated from a network perspective, and my VMs need the network to work, to run, to be accessed, that's a failure where I might need to restart those virtual machines. And so vSphere HA can monitor your ESX server, and if the other hosts can no longer talk to it over the network, it will then check, hey, is it heart beating to my data stores? If it's still heart beating to the data stores, that means it's still running, it hasn't crashed, but it's been isolated from the network. And at that point, you can, you can configure vSphere HA to fail any VMs on it to another host. Or you can have them stay there. It really depends on your, your, your configuration and your virtual machines. vSphere HA is quite configurable to respond to different types of failures, like host isolation. There's also another one called All Paths Down. All Paths Down usually refers to some kind of failure in the storage environment. It could be I've lost access to my array, and so I no longer have some paths here. But the array hasn't failed, right? But the host just can't talk to that array anymore. And once it loses all those paths, like the switch is gone, after a certain period of time, 140 seconds, that volume will be seen as all paths down by that host. Meaning it can no longer access it and doesn't really know why the paths are just down. And so vSphere HA can be configured to respond to that as well. After APD is considered the state for that volume, there's an additional configurable timeout inside of vSphere HA that the host can wait for. At that point, it will restart those virtual machines on another host. So if this entire storage array went down and the switch, the whole storage network's gone, neither of these hosts may have access to it, but maybe the hosts on the other side of that stretch cluster do. So vSphere HA will restart those virtual machines on whatever surviving hosts have access to that storage. There's also permanent device loss. This is a very similar state to all paths down, but it's a permanent state. Right? This usually means that a, a volume has been disconnected from the array. Someone's gone on this array and they've deleted the volume, possibly, or they've removed it from connection to that host. And the array can inform VMware that, hey, yeah, the, the volume has been removed. Do not expect it to come back. vSphere HA can also respond to PDL situations. If it's been removed from this array from these hosts, but this array still has it, vSphere HA can fail over any affected virtual machines to that side. And of course, vSphere HA can respond to a variety of failures, but they all are based on usually one of these three situations. An array failure, a switch failure, administrative change that causes the storage to go away, or some type of host failure. Right? vSphere HA will automatically restart those virtual machines on another host a host that has access to the resources. And this is where stretch storage really helps because it can provide access to that storage across data centers. So you have more res resiliency and vSphere HA has more options and is a a able to respond to more types of failure scenarios. And so sometimes though, you might want to control where these VMs are. Right? If my host A here fails, but I don't want this VM to be failed over to the other site, there are ways to control that too. So vSphere HA has some features called VM groups and host groups. So I could say, hey, these VMs are part of VM group A. And these hosts are part of host group A. And then I can create what's called a VM affinity rule. Right? So I could say, hey, VM group A should be on host group A. And so this will make sure that vSphere HA and vSphere DRS that can move VMs around and so forth 
we'll try to respect this rule. I can say, hey, these VMs, as long as one or more of these hosts are available, put these VMs on these hosts. So if I only have one failure, the VMs aren't moved over here, they'll be moved on surviving hosts. Only if all of these hosts die, then vSphere HA and vSphere DRS will move those VMs to other hosts. You can also have must rules if you want to, saying that I don't care what happens, only these hosts can run these virtual machines. And within these rules, you can get more specific as well. You can have VM affinity rules and VM anti-affinity rules, meaning I want these VMs to always be on different hosts from one another, or I want these VMs to always be on the same host as one another. Right, there's a lot of robust control inside of vSphere HA and DRS on where these VMs should be placed, can be placed, must be placed, and how they can be placed together or apart. If I have a clustered application, I might want one side of the cluster to always be on site A and the other side to always be on here. And I want them to be on different hosts so that can cluster can survive not only a site failure, but also a host failure. So if one host goes down, both VMs in that clustered application don't die. And these can be set on a cluster-wide basis. You can create these uh, APD response, PDL response, host isolation responses for all the VMs in the cluster. Or you can do VM overrides. So if you have specific applications that you want to be failed over or behave differently or not failed over, you can create VM overrides in your vSphere cluster saying, this virtual machine, I do not want it failed over even in a PDL response. Or, I want this virtual machine to have an immediate PDL response. I don't want vSphere to HA to wait at all after it's seen PDL because it's important for me that it comes back up immediately. So there's a lot of robust and specific control you can build inside of vSphere HA to control and perform automatic failure, fail over, rather, of your virtual machines in your stretch cluster. And this is all enabled, enabled by vSphere HA and, of course, Active Cluster on the Flash Ray. So this has been our series on stretch clusters and Active Cluster on the Flash Ray. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.